Welcome to Live Doff, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, which is Shabbos Daf Kuf Mem Vav. We're at the Mishnah, 12 lines from the top. It says the Mishnah, Shoiver Adam Asachavis. One may crack open a barrel which contains figs. So you can use a knife, you can use a spear to crack open his barrel, Lechoil Heimena Gregoris to have access, to be able to eat the um, figs which are contained within this barrel. Now there's no concern of malacha here. The run explains because he's merely being mechalkel. He's demolishing, he's ruining something. In which case, generally it would be an Isidur Abonon, the run says, but since it is Letzirich Shabbos, it is for the sake of Shabbos uh, use, he needs to have access to his food in this Chavis. The Chavim allowed him to go ahead and demolish, ruin, break his barrel. Ubalvad says the Mishnah provided, he must make sure, Shalayiskavin lasts his cleat, that he has no intention of making a cleat. Rashi explains this to mean that he's not forming a proper opening, a proper hole. So he's merely breaking it, leaving these jagged edges there, breaking apart the chavis. He's not forming, fashioning, crafting a proper opening to his cleat, in which case, He'd be doing a malacha. Which malacha would this be? Makabe patish. Meaning, fashioning, adding an uh, enhancement, adding a feature to a kli, the putting the finishing touches on a kli, that's called makabe patish. So you can't go ahead and form an opening. He merely could break a piece off the side of his chavis to have access to the food therein. Continues the Mishnah, Ve'ei noikvin megufa shel chavis. Likewise, one cannot puncture the lid of a chavis, the Gemara will explain exactly what the uh, circumstances are here. Now all agree, you cannot puncture a hole on the side of it. Now what are we speaking about? The Gemara will explain whether we're speaking about the side of the lid or on the side of the actual barrel. Continues the Mishnah of Imhoisan, the Kuva. Now if this barrel already had a puncture, it was very perforated, and he'd like to plug it up, he may not place wax on it because he's going to be smearing it. In which case, it's a malacha, malacha of memachik. There was a story that came before of Yechem and Zakai when he was in this town, Ba'arav, where a person plugged a hole using wax. Rabbi Yechem responded, I'm concerned. Perhaps he's liable to chatas. Perhaps he did a malacha. Fine, he plugged up the hole. That wouldn't be a malacha. But perhaps he smeared the wax around the opening of the hole to properly smooth it with the, uh, attach it to the wall of the chavis, in which case he would be doing a malacha. Let's take a look at Rashi here, who is seven lines from the top. Beginning with the words Shoiver Adam Chavis. Malaya Gregroy, so this chavis is full of dried figs, Bisakin, Oy Besayev, so he uses a knife or a, a sword. So he cracks open his barrel, Lechol, we meant a Gregroy, to uh, extract from it the figs. Dein Bemakalkal, Shum Isser Beshabbos. Because this fellow was merely destroying, that doesn't entail any Isser on Shabbos. Now apparently Rashi holds that there isn't even an Isser Drabbanon. The Ritva points out, it seems that there's no concern whatsoever because Rashi holds that there's no concept of binyan, building or steer or demolishing when it comes to a kli. So Rashi, Lishi Tasa, according to his opinion, holds that demolishing a kli doesn't even involve Isad Rabbanon. But as we said, the other, the Ran, for instance, learns, he learns in Rashi that there is an Isad Rabbanon, but that was mutter because the Tzorich Shabbos. Continues Rashi, well, Vashalei, is Kavanas, is kli. He shouldn't have the intent to make a clay, so he can't involve himself in fashioning, in uh, crafting this uh, nice opening, to create this nice opening, this properly formed hole. A noikvin megufa, he cannot make a hole in a lid, hadvuka bifiachavis, which is on the top of the mouth of the, attached to the mouth of, mouth of the chavis, lazis nekev, he can't make a nekev. El enoitelis kula. He simply removes the entire lid to open the barrel. But if he would perforate the lid, he's fashioning an opening. 
So this was Shittas of Yehuda, who says it's considered making a Pesach. Chacham say no, there's no concern. De'ein derech Pesach, l'chavas bekach. This is not the ordinary way of making a, chav- a Pesach, an opening for a chavis. Nobody makes a hole in the lid. You want to open your barrel, instead of making a hole in the lid, just remove the lid. So it's not really serving a purpose to have a hole in the lid. Additionally, if he's uh, getting involved in adding another hole, another opening, another spout to his chavis, then let him make it in the actual body of the barrel. Why is he making it on the lid, which is something which is makeshift, it's, it's here today, gone tomorrow. Let him put the effort in the actual body of the, of the chavis. So in any case, there's no concern here, according to the Rabbanon, because this is not considered to be adding a feature, enhancement to the barrel itself, and therefore there's no malacha. The more we'll explain exactly what this means. So you shouldn't use wax to plug up the hole. This involves the malacha mamachik. So the story came before Rabbi Yechem Azakeh Barav. Rashi says, Medina, a, a province, so he was concerned perhaps this fellow is chayiv achatas. Shema mirecha shava, perhaps. He smeared, he smoothed out the wax to attach the wax on the doifnek and the walls of the kli surrounding the hole which would be involved, which would involve a malacha of memachik. Let's get back to the Gemara. Says the Gemara, Amar v'yoyishya, this allowance to break a barrel using, uh, for instance, a sword. So one is actually moving this tool, the sword, to crack open his barrel, this is only allowed Loishon el Drusais. If he's trying to extract those pressed figs, so Drusais are the dried figs which were Drusais pressed together in a glob, in which case he needs this tool, this sword, to cut it apart. So since he's already handling the sword for the sake of separating, cutting apart those figs, then he's allowed to use it to crack the barrel open as well. But if those dried figs are not globbed together, not stuck together, they're separate, in which case he doesn't need a tool to separate them, then he's not allowed to be metal to the saif, the sword, to crack open the barrel. And Rashi already gives us a hint because we're working with Shittas of Nehemiah, who holds that any type of utensil, even a dvarhet, even a permissible utensil, can only be handled for the sake of its defined use and purpose. Chachamim, uh, the Rambam explains that there's a, the Isra of moving around stuff on Shabbos is a, out of concern that he might get involved in doing malachis, he might get involved in just transporting stuff on Shabbos. So the Chacham gave us a special allowance to move around things that we need. Rabbi Nechemia takes it a bit further. You can only move an item for the sake of its defined purpose. Otherwise, it's not included in the heter of Tilton on Shabbos, perhaps, he regards that as merely transporting things around because it's not for its designated use. It's not called a shimush using this, this um, object properly. And therefore, it is muktan shabbos. So again, if he needs this tool, he needs the sword for the sake of cutting apart his figs, in that case, since he's already holding it for that, he may use it to extract it, to open the um, barrel up, to crack open the barrel. But if he doesn't need it for the figs because they're sitting separately, the Mephorodites, no tool is required, then he cannot even handle the sword for the sake of cracking open the Chavis because it's not its defined purpose. Says the Gemara, is that the case? That separate figs would not allow him to handle the Saif, the sword, to crack open the barrel. Maybe Adam is a Chavis. A person may bring a barrel of wine, and he could slice the tip, the head of the of the barrel with a sword, and present it to his guest on Shabbos. And he has absolutely no concern. So obviously, using a saif, a sword for this purpose, entails no iser. Says Mahi Rabbonani. That Bryce is following she is Rabbonani who have no concern, no reservation regarding using a, a kli, even if it's not for its defined and designated purpose. Masis and Rebbe however, our Mishnah is reflecting Shittas Rebbe who limits the use of items on Shabbos to their defined purpose. Says the Gemara, Umay duchid Rebbe 
What was pressing Rabbi Oishia to interpret Nechemya to interpret our Mishnah in accordance with their view of Rabbi Nechemya, who limits the use of objects on Shabbos? How do you know that our Mishnah was following that shita? Ubed and we're speaking specifically when we have those figs which were clumped together. How does he know? Look, Mabim Farad is Rabbanon. Why can't he interpret the Mishnah in accordance with Shita's Rabbanon, who allow even carrying the Saif to crack open a barrel which contains Mufaradis, figs which are lying separately? Amarava, you know why? Masis and Kashise. Because the wording of the Mishnah appeared difficult to Rabbi my area, the Tani Groigrois, why does the Mishnah specifically choose to describe the Shabbos as containing Groigrois? Listen to Paris. Why speak about dried figs? Just simply say it has Paris inside. Why get so specific? Elosh Maminobedrusis. Apparently, the Mishnah is indicating that we're speaking about figs, dried figs, which were lumped together in a glob and needs to be separated using a tool, and that's why he's allowed to move around this tool for the sake of those figs and on the way you can use it to crack the barrel as well. Continues the Gemara, Tanya Chada, we have in one Brayse which says, Chosoles shal Gregory. So Chosoles are these makeshift baskets made from palm branches in which they would put unripe fruit. Chosoles shal Gregory of these dried figs or shal Tamarim of dates. So they would place these unripe fruits in there to sit there and to warm up and to ripen. Now when he's ready to access his fruit, how does he do it? Matir has a choice, either matir. He can untie those baskets. Umafkia, or he can just take them apart, collapse them. Vechaitich, or he can actually cut through it. Now matir, untying, he can do with his hands. Mafkia, collapsing it, or vechaitich, cutting it, Rashi explains to be referring to using a kli for that purpose. Vitani, we have another bias which says, Matir, he can simply untie it, but he can't collapse it with a kli, nor can he cut through this basket. So apparently, there's a limitation here, and there's a steer between both prices. One price allows all three methods, the second price limits. Loi kasha, once again, will resolve it as follows, that they reflect those two opinions, her rabbonon, her mechemya. The sheet of Rabbanon allows using even a kli, for instance, a knife, for this purpose, although it's not the intended designated purpose of a knife, to cut through baskets. Whereas Ramechemia limits the use of a knife only for its designated purpose, to cut bread, to cut meat. Therefore, it doesn't allow use of a knife to undo this basket. The Sanya, as we went to the Bryce of Ramechemia, I feel a tarvet, even a spoon, a feel a talus, a garment, a feel a sakin or a knife, ain nitol in elo tashmisha. It can only be handled if his intent, purpose is to use it for its designated use. Continues the Gemara, Boi Meneir of Sheshis. So they asked the following question of Sheshis. Let's just give a quick intro here based on what we learned in the Mishnah. One can crack open a barrel because he's merely accessing the content of the barrel. It's a, a destructive, act of destruction. As opposed to making a neck of a Pesach, Noe Rashi said, that he can't do. He can't form, he can't fashion a nice opening, a nice hole, because that's a constructive act. That's enhancing the appearance and the function of this kli. That's called a malach of makar patish. So destruction art is allowed. Construction is unallowed, is disallowed, is prohibited. What about something in the middle? What about, this Gmoy is going to ask regarding taking a spear and poking it through the side, the walls of this barrel. So he's not forming a nice, a pleasant looking opening. It's not this small puncture, it's this rather large hole with some jagged edges. So you can look at it either way. Is he coming to fashion an opening to the chavis? Is he coming to enhance the function, coming to add a feature and it's a malacha? Or perhaps he's merely breaking it open so that the wine can flow out freely in abundance. So it's an act of destruction or is it considered to be a positive act and is a malach? Boy mini Rav Sheshis. Maulim Mivras Chavisa. What is the Allah regarding puncturing? A barrel Biburtiya Bishabata. Biburtiya is this spear. On Shabbos, may one do this or not? Do we say, well, do we characterize this act? Do we define it as a kavana of a Pesach that is forming an opening? 
he's making a nekev. And therefore, it would be Asr. Oi Dilmo, perhaps, Lai Nofakim Achavim. He's merely expressing his, his good eye, his generosity. He wants the water to flow out, the uh, wine to flow out in abundance, perhaps. He's using it to serve his guests. In any case, the point here is merely to get the wine out. It's an access route to his wine. He's not coming to enhance the barrel. So it's an act of destruction, so to speak. Vashari, and it's mutter. So it's a medium sized hole, jagged. So it can be viewed as perhaps forming an opening, a Pesach, adding and enhancing his chavis, or perhaps it's merely an access route to his wine. Amr lay, so if Shesh has responded, Amr lahu, Shesh responded to them, Le Pischa kamechav ma'asr. It's considered to be a Pesach, we define, we characterize this as the formation of an opening. He's enhancing the chavis, he's adding another feature, another way to get the wine out, and therefore it is asr. Meisve. So you have a kasha from a brice. This is the brice we mentioned earlier. Maybe other chavish A person may bring a barrel full of wine. Ooh, matiz roisha besayif. And snap off the top of the chavis using a sword. Apparently, forming this opening, this hole, is not regarded as a malacha. So why is this different in our case of the spear? Says what is the difference? Why? Hosam, in that case, as Rashi explains, he is chopping off the top of the, of the barrel right underneath the lid. Apparently the lid is not large enough. The hole there wouldn't be uh, adequate to pour out the wine in the buns. So therefore he cuts right below the lid where the barrel widens a, a bit. This results in a wider opening. So it's larger than the lid opening. So apparently the point that there is on account of generosity. Hasam vaday. Certainly la'ayin yafaka machavim. Hocha, however, in our case where he's putting a spear through the side of the barrel, which results in a smaller hole than the lid, why is he doing this? Why can't he simply, if his intent is merely to have the wine pour out in abundance, it's an expression of generosity, so why does he simply open the lid on top? Why is he forming this new hole, which is a medium-sized hole? If his intent is merely to gain access to his wine and have it pour out in abundance, let him just go open the lid on top. So apparently, he is, for some reason, forming a new opening. He'd like to add a new feature to his barrel and open a new hole on the side of the barrel and that's considered to be a maluch. Let's take a look at Rashi inside. 28 lines from the bottom. Lemivraz litchoif pundabalas to put the Think through the um, through the barrel with Borti Baraimach with a spear now to put it through the walls of the barrel Linkaif to make a hole. So the question is La'ain Yafa. Do we say, well, he's merely trying to crack open his barrel to gain access to the wine so that it pours out in abundance. Laharchiv Moitzayain to enlarge the opening, the exiting of the wine, the neck of Godel. So he's trying to make a large exit root for the wine, but the loy nakivle, why why should we think so? Because he chose to do it in this way, not in a proper way. The loy nakivle, kedercham noikvin. The way usually you make holes, nakav ogul, a round one, viyafa, and a nicely formed hole. He's using this spear to break open his barrel. Apparently, he's trying to have proper access to his wine. So the Gemara says, well, it's asr. And the Gemara asks, what is this different than slicing off the top of the barrel? Hosam vade, over there, certainly la'in yafakim machavim. His purpose is merely an expression of generosity. He's widening the opening of the kli underneath the, the lid. As it says, So he's cutting off the top of the barrel, which is the rim of its, of its uh, mouth. So it's where it begins widening underneath the mouth. The point there is, because the lid apparently isn't wide enough, he wants a larger hole. So he cuts off right above, under the lid. But in our case, where he's putting the spear through the sides or the walls of the chavis, if he's looking to have his wine spill out in abundance, let him just take off the lid. Why is he forming this new hole on the uh, wall of the chavis? Apparently, for some reason, he wants to enhance his barrel and add a new feature, a new opening to his barrel, which is considered to be a malach. Continues the Gemara. So what about puncturing the lid itself? Rav Yudah says, it's Asr. Chachamim say, it's Mutter. 
So the Mishnah began with that machlekes, and then the Mishnah continued with one more statement. He shouldn't puncture it from its side. The will give us two approaches to these words of the Mishnah, to the machlekes and the subsequent statement. Omar Afun, machlekes, the discussion, the disagreement between Rabbi Yehuda, who says one may not puncture a lid of a barrel, and the Chacham who allow. What is it pertaining to? Where is he puncturing the lid? Lemala, when he punctures the top of the lid. In which case the Chacham say, why is he making a hole on top of his lid? Let him just remove the lid. That's something which is more commonly done. So if he wants to open his barrel, let him remove the lid. Why is he puncturing a hole? That's not considered to be a proper opening. He's not really adding much to his chavis. He's not enhancing it. It's basically an effort in futility. It's not considered to be a tikkun, a makkah, a patish. Avil minat sad, but if he chooses to puncture the side of his lid, tevi'akal asa. All agree, even the chacham would agree, it's asa because there is some sort of benefit in puncturing a hole at that location. Rashi explains, it protects the wine from dirt, from pebbles falling into it. So in this case, he's actually enhancing the performance of his barrel. He's adding a feature, a uh, horizontally formed hole. Therefore, all agree that this would be considered a proper Pesach and a Malach. Vahainu Diktani. That's how we understand the next statement of the Mishnah. Lo yikvenu mitzida. Do make a hole on the side. On the side of what? Of the lid. Because all agree, that's called a Pesach. So this is Rav Huna's approach. The Machlekes is on top. Everybody agrees on the side. Rav Chizda Omar, Machlekes Menat Sad. The Machlekes actually pertains to the side of his hole. Rav Yudah says it's a Pesach because it protects it from the offer falling in. Whereas the Chacham maintain a hole is not meant to be punctured into a lid. If you want to make a hole, make it in the barrel itself where it's a permanent fixture, a permanent feature of the lid. Perhaps it's something which comes and goes. Why is he exerting effort into puncturing his lid? So that's not something which is generally done. One generally removes his lid if he wants to open it over there. So it's not considered to be a proper Pesach and there's no Malach involved. But if he punctures the top of the lid, all agree, there's no important purpose there. It's not considered to be a derech of a Pesach. It's not considered to be an enhancement to his Chavis. He's not being Masak in the Kli. He's not really adding much features to his barrel. And therefore, it's not a Malach. If so, what does the Mishnah mean? When the Mishnah proceeds and says, Don't make a hole on its side. That's referring to puncturing a hole in the actual wall, the side wall of the Chavis. That all agrees on Malacha, because that's not in the lid. For some reason or another, he, he wants to add another opening, another passageway to the wine on the side of the Chavis. So he's enhancing the actual barrel, he's adding a new feature to his barrel, and all agree that would be considered a So according to Rechiz's approach, the Machlokes is puncturing a hole on the side of the lid. On the top, all agree would be Aser. Likewise, all agree would be Mutter. And likewise, puncturing a hole into the actual barrel, on the side of the actual barrel, all agree is considered to be adding a feature to his barrel and enhancing it in a malach. So in summary, we learned regarding a barrel which contains food or drink. The mission told us one well, may break the barrel to get his figs out. According to Nehemiah, he cannot be metaltal, a sword, only if he actually needs it. For instance, to cut apart those figs. In which case, once he's holding it for that, he can actually use it to break open the barrel. The Misha stipulated they must make sure not to make a, have a kavana to make a cleave, as she explains. He shouldn't make a nicely formed, fashioned opening, that would be considered a malacha. We learned that the Gemara, one can chop off the top of a barrel of wine, that's considered to be la'ayin yafe, he's merely expressing his generosity to have the wine pour out in abundance. Regarding puncturing the doifen of a of a chavis, a side of a chavis using a spear, we concluded that's asr because that's considered to be forming a new hole, a new pesach, a new opening to his barrel. Regarding puncturing the lid itself, according to Rav Huna, if the hole is on top of the lid, then we have Machlekes, Ravida says Asr, Rabbanon say Mutter, that hole has not much value, it's not considered to be a Pesach for the Chavis. If the puncture is on the side of the lid, all agree that it's Asr, because that has value, that's adding and enhancing the barrel, 
by protecting the content from having fire and matter fall into it. According to Rav Chizda, if the hole is on top of the lid, all agree, it's useless, it's not considered to be a Pesach. If it's on the side of the lid, then we have the Machlekes. Continues the Gemara. Tana Rabbanu, we learned in the Bryce. A noikvin nekev chadash v'shabbos. If one has a kli, he cannot initiate a new hole, he can't puncture a new nekev. V'imbalo ha'isif ma'isif. But he would, if he would like to merely enhance it, broaden the hole, widen the hole, that he can do. V'yesh oimrim, a ma'isifin. Yesh oimrim hold, no, he cannot broaden even a pre-existing hole. V'shavin, now all agree, sh'a noikvin nekev yashin l'chatchila. One may unplug a neck of Yashan, so we have a pre-existing hole which was plugged shut, he can unplug it, reopen it, that's not considered to be making a neck. Says the more of a Tanakama, now getting back to the Tanakama, who differentiates between initiating a new hole which is Asr and widening a pre-existing hole which is Mutter, what is the difference between the two things? Maish, no neck of Chadish Deloy, why can't he make a new neck of? To come a and Pischa, because he's fashioning an opening, he's making a tick into the Kli. Are you Sufi Nami? Come a and Pischa. When he's enhancing and broadening, widening a hole, there as well, he's being masak and he's repairing, he's fixing, enhancing the opening. That's considered to be a gmar malacha. Amar Rava, the explanation is as follows. Tvar Torah means minat Torah, kol Pesach, she'ene osu, lahachnes lohitzi, ene Pesach. Any opening which is not used multi-directional, it's not used in both directions, to take things and put in through this hole, and to take things out of this hole, is not regarded legally as a Pesach. In order for this opening to be considered a true, uh, proper feature of this Kli, a, true, a truly functional opening, it needs to be serving in both directions. That's considered to be a, a permanent, uh, proper hole of a Kli, a proper opening of a Kli, it's meant to serve going in, it's meant to serve coming out, in both directions. That's been not Rabbanon, however, said, even a, a single directional hole is considered to be a Isser, we regard it as a Pesach, why? On account of a Lul Shatan Goyim. Lul Shatan Goyim is a chicken coop. There they would make a hole for ventilation. And it's a multi-directional hole, it's a multi-use hole. The Ovid, it's meant to have fresh air come in, and to extract through it the hevel, the putrid smell, the, the humidity within the chicken coop. So it's a multifunctional hole, which is considered to be a proper Pesach. Now, not everybody is aware of the multifunction purpose of this hole, of the Lul Shatan Golem. So there are a concern if one can go ahead and make a hole which is single directional. For instance, the opening of a kli. For instance, this, this hole here that's merely a, a small hole, it's meant to have the, um, the wine uh, come out of the kli through it. It's a single directional hole. In this case, if it would be mutter, perhaps he'll confuse it with a lul shatan girl. Even there, he might go ahead and form that hole not knowing that that hole has a double function, a double purpose. So if you allow this, he's perhaps going to form the hole there as well. So on account of that concern, the Chum said even a single direction hole cannot be made on Shabbos. But if he already has a pre-existing hole, he's simply trying to widen it, that he can do. Why? A Sufi, to add, to widen a hole, Vadai, Belo Shatan Goylem, Le'asla Sufi. Certainly that concern is not present by the chicken coop. He's not going to widen the hole. Why? He's concerned about a creature, a rat, entering through that hole and attacking his chickens. So since the whole Isser of making a single directional hole to puncture a kli, which it's only serving in one direction to have the liquid pour out through it, it's only a single directional hole. If that Isser is only based on the concern that he might puncture a hole, a ventilation hole, in the Losh Tani so that only applies to a new hole, which one might, one might be tempted and inclined to do that, to form a new hole by the chicken coop. But, if there's a very pre-existing hole, he's merely trying to enhance and widen it a bit, that would be better because there's no concern of one doing that by a chicken coop. He's not going to want to widen that hole. 
for concern of his ch- safety of his chickens. The other sheet holds no aimasif, and he cannot widen the hole in the kli. Why? There is a concern. Zimnan the light tikkun meikar. There's a concern that he might actually do that by a chicken coop. Perhaps light tikkun meikar. He hadn't properly formed the ventilation hole. He didn't make it wide enough to be functional. But aslar buchibe. He might actually go ahead and widen it. So there is a concern of widening even by a chicken coop. Certainly, he's not going to make it a large hole which will allow animals to enter, but if he made only a teeny hole, which is not large enough, large enough to function, he's going to be tempted to go ahead and enlarge it. Therefore, the Chachamim prohibited even enlarging a single directional hole in a Kli for concern that one may go ahead and apply that to a little tiny girl as well. That one may not widen even a pre-existing hole in a Kli. Continues the Gemara. This shavan, they all agree, should not even neck a yashan chatchila, one may reopen a pre existing hole. Omar Vida Meshmo. Loy shano, this allowance is only said, Ella be mokem asalishamer, that this hole is present and was plugged in order to be meshamer, to maintain, to safeguard the aroma, the freshness of the wine. In this case, the hole wasn't really plugged so tightly and fastened so properly, in which case unplugging it is not considered to be really crafting anything and initiating a hole. Because he's simply removing this makeshift plug, but if this hole and the plug which was inserted in this hole, so it was plugged up in order to support the, and strengthen, reinforce the barrel, so it was done properly, Rashi says it's a steam of Malyasa, it's a proper plug. In this case, removing that plug is considered as tantamount to forming a new hole. Says, well, what, what do you mean, Lashamr, Lachazik? Where exactly are these plugs, are these holes uh, found to be found? Hey, Chidomi, Lashamr, what exactly is a, an example of Lashamr, which is considered to be merely a makeshift plug? Hey, Chidomi, Lachazik, what is an example of. This proper plug, Omar the hole which is on top of sea level, on top of the wine, Zeul Shamer, that plug, that closing up the hole was merely intended for the purpose of safeguarding the aroma, the freshness of the wine. So it's not below the wine level, it's above the wine level. So that hole wasn't so properly plugged, therefore removing that plug. It's not regarded as though he's opening and fashioning a hole. However, below water level, below uh, wine level, that plug indeed was there to strengthen, to reinforce the barrel, meaning to keep the wine in the barrel. That plug must have been done properly. And removing it is regarded like a Peseach of a Pesach. So according to Chizda, it depends if it's above a wine level or below wine level. Rava Amar, Lamatmanaya Even if it's below wine level, that is also considered to be merely Lashamer because it didn't need to be plugged so properly. It's not really supporting the weight of the wine, it's merely on the side of the cleat. Vechidam the Khazik, what is an example of the plug which is there to reinforce the Kli to really safeguard that wine and plug properly for that purpose? Keep going, for instance, Shinikva Lamatmanashmar. If the barrel was perforated and punctured underneath the sediment, meaning only on the bottom of the clay, in which case it needs to be pr- plugged properly because it needs to sustain the weight of the entire content of the barrel, that's a properly formed plug. Removing that plug is regarded as though he is forming a new hole. I'll bring you a riot from the following brisa to your concept that only a proper plug is considered to be it's considered as though the hole is no longer existing and removing that plug is considered to be a Pesach. So only something which was properly closed off is considered to be non-existing. The Brisa says, Bayis Sosam, Yeishle Arba Amis. Rashi explains, we're speaking about partners in a courtyard, so each one has his house. They want to split the courtyard between themselves. Halacha is that firstly, we grant a portion of the courtyard per doorway. A doorway needs a service area in front of it. 
So we, we grant for each doorway a certain amount of the chatzah area, four amas into the chatzah. So we have a doorway. So however wide that doorway is, so we give him an area extending into the courtyard at a distance of four amas for each doorway. So that's the first level, first stage in splitting up the chatzah. Then the remaining area in the chatzah is split evenly amongst the partners. The Bryce says, bias sasa. So he has a bias whose doorway was blocked off. Is that considered to be a doorway? Which grants him that privilege of getting the four amas in the chatzah? Or do we say that doorway is no longer in existence? It's not regarded as a doorway. It doesn't have its privileges. Bayis sasa. Yeshla abamas. It still has this privilege, this right of getting the four amas. Parat says, Psimov, however, if he demolished the doorway, the posts, in that case, the doorway is no longer in existence. Enoi Dal Damas, he no longer has that privilege to receive the four amas. Another halacha, a similar concept, by Sasam, this home whose doorway has been blocked off, Enoi Metamek Hosuyov, it does not impart tuma to the area surrounding it. Rashi explains that there's a tuma around a maze, four amas around the maze. Chacham were concerned that perhaps one who gets too close to the maze might hover above it, might become tummy through being an oil. Therefore, within four amas, it is metame, a person who gets too close. Now, a caver, a grave, likewise has that tumma. Within four amas of the grave, there's tumma. What if the maze is sitting in a home? A home is not a grave. So it depends. If the bias is sosom, the doorway was the doorway was blocked off, was closed off. Ain't a metami called Sviva. It is not metami. Why? Because it's still a house. It's still a home. It's not a caver. So surround the area surrounding that home does not have tumma. Because as long as it's still legally regarded as a doorway, this thing is considered a home. Parat as psima. But if he demolished the doorpost, in this case, it is no longer considered to be a home. He blocked off the door completely. Blocked it. Removed the doorpost. Now we regard it as a caver. So this home has attained the status of a grave and it's metamical sphiva. And it imparts tumma to the area immediately surrounding it. So Abayi says to Rava, I'm proving to you from this price that when something was completely demolished, then it loses its status. This doorway is completely blocked off and demolished and it's no longer considered a doorway. But if it's merely blocked off, but it still has the doorposts, and it doesn't lose its status of a doorway. Likewise, a similar concept when it comes to the plugging of a hole. If it's properly plugged and really fast and tightly closed off well, for instance, if it's beneath the sediment, beneath the shmar, where a proper plugging is required, only then is that hole considered to be gone and not in existence. And reopening is regarded as making a new Pesach. But... If it's merely on the side of the barrel, even if it's below wine level, that plug is not really, doesn't really have the same level of the plug on the bottom. It's not really such an enhanced plug, and therefore we consider the hole to be still in existence, and removing that plug does not involve a malach. So in summary, we learned about making a neck of chadosh in the kli, all agree that's asr. To add, to enhance it, to widen a kli, a hole in a kli, there's a machlik. Regarding reopening an old hole. So if that plug was merely lishamer to maintain the freshness of the wine, that's not really a proper plug. And it's mutter to remove that. If it's lechazik, if it's there to uh, reinforce the barrel, it's a proper plug. Removing that is considered a malach. Now, what is the definition of lishamer lechazik? So you have two opinions. One opinion says lishamer means that it's above wine level. The other opinion says, even if it's below wine level, it's still considered l'shamer. What does l'chazek mean? One sheet that says, if it's below wine level. Rava says, it needs to be on bottom. All the way on bottom of the barrel, only then is it considered to be a proper plug. Continues the Gemara. Guvsa. Guvsa is a kana, a reed, which they would use as a spout for a barrel. Can one use that? Rav, Asar, Ushmo, Shari. Rav says you can't, Shmuel says you could. Gemara will explain. To go ahead and take a kana and chop it down to size. To kuliyam le pligi the aser. All agree that it's aser. He's been masakin a kli. Ahaduri. 
to replace, to return the kana to its place once it was previously used and cut down to size. To kuliyamalei pligi the shari, all agree. There's no concern. It's muta. Ki pligi. When is there machlekes? The chaticha. If this kana was already cut down to size, but v'loy misakna wasn't yet fitted into the chavis, and we're not sure whether it's properly fitting, whether it's it really has the right size. Can one affix it to the hole of the chavis and use it or not? Man the asar, Shmuel says you can, he holds. Rambo says you can, he holds. Kazrina, and one can't use it because we're concerned Dilma asar lemechta Because perhaps he's going to go ahead and cut it down to size. If it doesn't fit properly, he's going to be inclined and tempted to adjust it. And that's a malach. Uman the shari. According to Shmuel, who allows, he says, Loi Gazrin, we're not concerned about that. Kitanoi, as we find the following machlegas tanoi. Ein choytrin shaferes biyantiv, one may not cut a reed, a cylinder, a kana on yantiv, ein tarachayim b'shabbos, certainly not on Shabbos, because it's involving a malach. Nafla, machzir noise b'shabbos. If it fell out of the barrel, you can go and return it back to its place on Shabbos. There's no concern. Ein tarachayim b'yantiv, and certainly on yantiv, one's allowed to do that. For Rabbi Yishim Meikl, the Bible concludes, Rabbi Yisha says, it's mutter. Now, he's being lenient with what? Says the more, Rabbi Yisha, hi, what is he referring to? Ilam Arisha, perhaps on the first halacha, of cutting the reed down to size. He allows that? Hukam Asakin Mana. He's fashioning, he's fixing. Hey, Kli, all agree that's us, sir. Ela Sefa. Rather, he's going on the Sefa, which discusses returning the kana back to its place in the hole of the barrel. There, he's lenient. Tanakam and Nami, Meshukashari, Tanakam as well allows. So what's the machlekes? Ella says the Gemara, rather, evidently there's a third halacha that is contained in this price. The chaticha v'loy mesakam, ike The point between them is the case where chaticha, this kana was already cut down, but wasn't yet affixed to the barrel, in which case we're not sure of whether it's going to be successful or not. Mar sava gazrina, Tanakam says you can't do this because we're concerned that if he sees that it's not fitting properly, he might be tempted to adjust and cut it down to size. So you can't use this. Umar Savar, in contrast to Rabbi Yeshu holds, like as written, we are not concerned and smut. Dorash of Shisha, Breda of Idi, Mishreda of Yechanan, so he taught Nehra of Yechanan, Lach Rabbi Yeshu, there's no concern, one may go ahead and use the Kana even for the first time. Continues the Gemara, Vim Hoysen, Nakuva, the Mishnah concluded if there was a hole in the barrel, he must make sure not to use wax, because if he smears that wax, he's doing a malach. What about using thick oil? So it's not wax, it's thick oil. Rav Asar Ushmol Shari. Rav says, no. Shmol says you can use it. Man the Asar, according to Rav, who says it's Asar, why? Gazrina Mishim Shava, who concerned. If he uses this, perhaps he'll use wax, which will entail a Isar Darais. Oh, man the Shari, according to Shmol, who allows. Like Gazrina, we're not concerned about confusing oil with wax. Amrile Rav Shmol Barav Chanel Rav Yosef. Beferish Amrslan, Mishmei the Rav, Shari. You specifically told us the name of Rav, that one may go ahead and use thick oil. Omar Tavaz Rishpa. His name was Tavaz Rishpa, means he was a bird trapper. So he said, Omar Shmo, the name of Shmo. Anu halacha. Haitar for the Asa. This leaf of a myrtle, of a, of a hadas. Asr. One may not affix it into the hole of the barrel to use it as a spout. So the leaf of a hadas was perfectly suitable for this because it can bend, fold up slightly, and serve as a, as a spout, as a spigot. So he can't use it. Why? My timer. Rav Yemer Medifti Omar, he says the reason is Xerushim Marziv. Because if he uses this leaf and forms it in this uh, form of a, of a faucet, of a spout, perhaps this will lead him to actually form and create a proper spout, which is a malacha. Rav Ashi Omar, Gzeresh Yikta, the concern is that he might pick it off the branch, in which case it's a mesak and kli and it's also. So you have two reasons for the isa. My benayu. What is the difference between both approaches? Ike benayu, the difference is the katim uman, the katim umanchi. If the leaf is already picked off the branch and just sitting there, so there's no concern of shami yikta. But there is a concern, if he can do this, he might go ahead and actually form and create, fashion a proper spout. Continues the Gemara regarding another halacha, Beis Sadya. Beis Sadya Rashi describes as being felt materials which are used sometimes instead of a substitute for a pillow. So can one go ahead and dress himself 
in these materials and carry it out in Shisra. Do we consider it to be a malbush, like a garment or not? Rav Asa, Rav says no. Shmuel Shari, Shmuel allowed. Shmuel considered to be a malbush. Berachen, now, what type of material are we speaking about? If they're soft, Berachen, Kulamale, Pligid, Shari, all agree that it's mutter, that's considered to be a Derach Malbush. Rashi says it is common to warm oneself up with it, so it's considered to be okay to carry in Shisra. Big cushion, if they're stiff and hard, the Kulamale, Pligid, the Asa, all agree that it's Asa, that has no resemblance to a garment. Ki pligi, when then is there a chokis b'mitzi? There's so in the middle, not too soft, not too stiff. In which case, Rav says it's aser. Man de aser, Rav says aser mechzikim masli. It appears like a load. Uman de shari, according to Shmuel, that it's mutter. Loi mechzikim masli. It doesn't appear like a load. Rather, we treat it like a garment. Says the Gemara, v'hod Rav. This iser that we are quoting the name of Rav, love a It wasn't something which we heard from him explicitly. It was derived from an incident. The following story. The Rav Iklalu asked Rav came to this place, where he didn't have enough space in the home to sit his Talmidim down. Nafak Yosef Bekarmelis, he went out and he sat down in a Karmelis in an unfenced area. Isolay Be Sadios, they brought him this type of material. Lo Yosef, he refused to sit down on the material. Mandachaz, now the person witnessing figured, Savar, he figured the de Beisad Yosef because Rab maintains one may not wrap himself with this material and carry it to Rab. Therefore, he didn't want to partake in it. He didn't want to benefit from it because it was brought to him and carried to him. Veloy, but that wasn't the reason, says Digmar. Meaning, you cannot derive from this story that Rab necessarily holds that one cannot wrap himself with these garments and take it out because perhaps the reason there was a totally different reason. Veloy, the reason was actually. Based on another concern, the Rav Achruzi Machrus. Based on Shari, actually, Rav announced that wrapping oneself with these materials is actually mutter. So why then didn't he sit on that material? Mishum Kovid Rabbi Seinu Lo Yoshev Alav. On account of the honor of Rabbi Seinu of our teachers, he didn't want to sit on it. Why? Because he was the only one that had this luxury of these uh, of these materials, and the other ones didn't. Uman and Ninahu. Who are we referring to? Which Rabbi Seinu were present there? Didn't have these materials to sit on. Rav Kahn and Rav Asi. So Rashi says they were Talmidei Chaberim. They were student colleagues. So on account of their honor, since they didn't have what to sit on, he refused to sit on them as well. But it's unrelated to a concern of carrying them as Rab, which certainly Rav holds would be mutter. So in summary, we learned three different halachas where we have machlekes between Rav and Shmuel. Placing this guvsa, this kana. This reed, this bamboo, which was already cut down to size, but was never, was never actually used. Rav says it's also this is a concern, he might cut it down to size. Shmuel says it's mutter. Using thick oil to, to plug up a hole, Rav says it's also for concern that he might confuse it with wax. Shmuel says it's mutter. The Gemara maintains, at least according to one version, that when it comes to these felt materials, which are in between soft and hard, can one wrap himself and walk out and just Rav? Rav says also, and Shmuel says mutter. When there's another halacha regarding using the leaf of a hadas as a spout for a barrel, according to one sheet it's mutter, according to other sheet it's aser. One reason is for concern that he might fashion a spout. There's another approach that he might go ahead and pick it off the branch. Continues the mission. Noisnin tafshel techabur, when I pay, place a uh, cooked dish, so it's a pot with some food inside, he can place it into a pit, place it down on the floor, b'shvil shomer, so that it remains cool. Likewise, you can place a container full of drinkable water into rhyme into undrinkable water, so that it cools off his water. Likewise, you can take a container of cool water, put it out in the sun, so that it warms the drop, it loses its chill. Continues the mission. If one's on the road and his clothing will not through mind they fell into water and they're wet. He can continue walking without any concern. Once he reaches the first courtyard of the city, which is a secure area, then he can remove his clothing and lay them out to dry. Lay them out in the sun to dry. He must make sure he's not doing it in full public view. 
perhaps people will think that he washed his clothing on Shabbos. So in private he can do it, but not in public. Continues the Gemara Pshita. The Mishnah began, he can place a tavshal in a bar. Why not? Mao the Tamer, perhaps I would say, Nigza Mishumashvi Gumais. That this wouldn't be allowed for concern that when he places it in the bar, he's going to see something uneven on the floor. He's going to want to place his pot properly. He's going to straighten out the Gumais, those pits, in which case he's doing a malacha. Perhaps that would be a concern, which would be a reason to prohibit this. Kamashma, the Mishnah teaches us, there's no such concern. Vesamai, my Yafim Beroim, he can place a container with good water into undrinkable water to keep them cool. Pshita. Why would I think otherwise? Seifa Tzrichale, the Mishnah speaks about this case on account of the next halach, which is indeed a novelty, a chiddush. Vesatzoinim Bechama, you can place a container in the sun, then that's mutter. Haname Pshita, this is also an obvious halacha. Perhaps, as the Gemara Ma'od the Tame, perhaps, Nigzar Mishum Da'os Dilma. Perhaps he should not be allowed to place in the sun. Perhaps he's going to confuse this with something else. He's going to be matzmin beremets, insulated using coals, which are muktzah, which may involve the malacha. So if you allow this, he's going to do that. Kamashmon, the mission teaches us there's no such concern, and he can do this. Misha Nashru continues the Gemara Amar Vidamara. Kol Mokam Sheasu Chacham. Whenever the Chachamim established an Isra and repay Mara Sa'ain on account of public perception, so that the public will not misinterpret what he's doing. Therefore, he must limit his action to prevent misconception. This iser applies universally, even when he's a privacy. In the privacy of his inner rooms, the Chacham applied a blanket iser. They didn't differentiate between different circumstances, whether he's in full public eye, whether he's in his private area. They didn't want to differentiate, and they issued a blanket iser. Tanan, we learn Tanan Mishnah, he can lay out his clothing to dry in the sun, but not in public view. So apparently we differentiate between something which can be done in public, lest the public think that he washed his clothing, but in private he can do it. So we differentiate between the circumstances. So it's more Tanai, indeed, it's a Machalik's Tanaim, whether we apply the iser universally or we differentiate. The son he was learned in the price. Shoitchan Bachama, he can lay out his clothing in the sun of Lake Negadam. But he can't do it in full public view. Rablazar Shimon Aisan, they say he can't even do it in private, because we don't differentiate between a public area and a private area. Okay, time for a brief review of today's daf. We began with the Mishnah, which presented to us a new concept. One may crack open a container. If he's merely engaging in a destructive act to access the food within it, he can break a container, a chavis which contains figs, as long as he doesn't fashion a proper opening, which is a, a constructive act. It's considered to be a tikkun for the kli. Likewise, he can slice off the top of a chavis shal yain, because there as well he's merely accessing the wine. It's, it's an act of destruction. He's ruining the chavis to get to his wine. He's not enhancing the barrel as opposed to making that hole with a spear on the side of his barrel, in which case, that's considered to be a positive act. He's forming an Pesach, which is a Melach. Regarding puncturing the actual lid, we have two approaches. According to Rav Huna, if the hole is on top of the lid, then we have Machlekes, read this as Asr, Rabban Say Mutter, that hole has not much value, it's not considered to be a Pesach for the Chavis. If the puncture is on the side of the lid, all agree that it's Asr, because that has value, that's adding and enhancing the barrel by protecting the content from having fire and matter for and fall into it. According to Chizda, if the hole is on top of the lid, all agree, it's useless, it's not considered to be a Pesach. If it's on the side of the lid, then we have the Machlekes. Regarding puncturing a new hole on Shabbos, so if it's a multi-directional hole being used in both directions, Minatur it's also. If it's a single directional hole, then it's also Minatur What about adding broadening, widening a pre-existing hole, we have machlekes. Regarding reopening a plugged hole, the Gemara said l'shamer, if it was plugged for the sake of l'shamer, then reopening that is mutter. If that plug was a proper plug for the sake of l'chazek, then opening that would be considered like an initiation of a new hole. We have two definitions of these terms. We're going to one approach in the Gemara. L'shamer means it's above wine level, in which case the plug is not really properly fastened. One sheet says even if it's below wine level, that is also not really considered to be a proper plug. What does lechazik mean? So one approach says, if it's below wine level, then that's considered to be a proper plug. 
Rabbi says it needs to be on the bottom of the barrel where it needs to be plugged properly to sustain the weight of the entire content of the barrel. We have three disputes between Rabbi and Shmuel regarding using a pre-cut kana, a bamboo, but wasn't yet used. It was chatech, but not masukah, not inserted in the barrel, so it's being used for the first time. Rabbi says it's asr. Shmuel says mutter. Using thick oil to plug up a hole, Rabbi says asr. Shmuel says mutter. Using these felt material, which are nor too soft, nor too thick, nor too tough. According to Rav, one may not wrap himself with that and walk out on Shesu Rav. According to Shmuel, we regard it as a malbash and it's mutter. Regarding using the leaf of a hadas as a spout for a barrel at Machlekes. We concluded with the Mishnah gave us three chidushim. He can place a pot in a burr without any concern of him being tempted to perhaps smooth out the floor of the burr. He can place a container with cold water in the sun without any concern that it might lead him to use coals. And finally, he can take his wet clothing, spread it out in the sun as long as he's doing it in private.